Oh, me. Part two, part two of my recording setup, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about what I'm going to do for my next RV, what I'm going to build. Um, today probably is a perfect day. It's just the weather sucks so bad. It was rainy and cold, and I hate that. Oh, I hate it so bad. But we get days like that, so tomorrow it's supposed to be very nice, and uh, oh, I'll be so glad. I love sunlight. But anyway, let me put this away real quick. Hold on scissors away all righty so in part one i showed you what i was doing this setup is going to work perfect it is perfect man and i based on what you see that i've done it's man it's so cool the stuff that they sell anymore that you can do to organize and strap things down and stuff that looks neat and good uh it's great for really anything that you'd want to do to be honest i mean just the imminent possibilities for what you can do and you're standing there in lows and you're trying to figure out what you want to do. It's kind of hard, but I've learned that start somewhere and then you're going to be making several several trips to Lowe's. I mean, it's crazy. But anyway, um, I want to turn this thing around and I'm going to show you exactly. I don't think I can rotate this. Hold on one second, guys. All right, well, let's just show you here. This is so cool. I've got my inner vase. And what I used in that was uh, Command Strips Velcro. My hard drive, I used some industrialized Velcro because I don't want that going anywhere. Uh, I've got a little Wi-Fi hotspot back there if I use it. Most of the time I use my cell phone. But these speakers are mounted. I'll get to those and how cool that is here in a second. But the, the, the Velcro is working for this mount. And it doesn't have to be where it's impossible for it to come up. You just don't want this thing to move when you're driving. This is not Velcro down because it'll go in my bag with my laptop and my mouse. But uh, what I did was these hooks I bought took a little half inch by eight inch wood screw like a multi-purpose screw so it didn't go to the bottom of this and just said okay i'm gonna go ahead and mount them now because i found these and what these are is those little wire molding like cable holders like you can wrap them around cable and it holds them almost like little bungees or something but they're not bungees they're wire you can twist them in shape and they hold things in so in other words they hold and it's holding these speakers down they're not going anywhere and it's their dark color which is good and it's not meant to be look perfect but it actually looks kind of cool it, it looks like it was made to hold stuff down like that and these hooks are not going anywhere so it's real cool so when i drive these speakers aren't going to do anything of the such now the cool thing here is uh where i have it set and, and in my workspace will only be about 36 inches wide to about 25 inches out. So that's nothing with space if I go down to a smaller RV van. Nothing. Um, the only difference for the time being that I'm going to have to do is is this here. I need to put something under to keep it from sliding. And in the meantime, I will prop it. I'll prop it up. So beautifully, it works. I love it. So one cool thing about it is when I do build, my biggest worry was desk space to do my music um the storage won't be a problem i know i have storage um the when i build that rv van is a lot of a lot of them you've probably seen online people build they have the bed in the back it's a big they call it a platform bed but it's just built up where it's about 36 inches high and there's a ton of room i mean you got to imagine in a pro master van a six and a half foot tall person can stand up in it so you got to look at you got it's not like you're crammed into the ceiling of the van and no room to sleep uh, the bed size are probably anywhere from a full size maybe a little bit bigger which is fine but uh it's gonna put tons of room under to where i can get my guitars and my storage and have access to go in there i can put hang up clothes or do stuff um and do things and it'll give me a ton of room up front because when I get everything done, I'm going to build the bed first. From the time I get the bed, I'm going to be able to look at the rest of the room and know where I'm going to bolt things like my kitchen part and some shelving. Because there are things that I'm going to put in that van that I've got to be able to put to where my power is, system is going to go and where the AC unit's going to go. Um, and, and several other things. So when i bought this rv uh, 
I loved it. I mean, I still love it. Don't get me wrong. I love this RV. If I wasn't thinking about going to a van or something smaller, wanting to build, I would just keep the RV here. I love it. Um, but there are things about this RV, the reason why I want to build. And one biggest reason is I want to build something that if I build it, I can fix it. And I don't have to worry about anything. The only difference is that van itself will go to Chrysler to get worked on for anything mechanical or if it, God forbid anything happens where it has to have any body work done on it. And the build will be in a such that God forbid something taps that van that I've got to unbolt that stuff and get it out of there and take it to build another van. It's going to be designed to do that. That's where those plus nuts I talked about come into play. It's going to be so cool. So first on the agenda is the reasoning is my electrical system. I've harked on that, but that is exactly one of the biggest reasons. Um, in this RV, this is a Winnebago Trend 23L. I love it. It's really cool. And some people don't care about generators. Listen, generators are cool to serve a great purpose. And the cool thing about the setup that I'll have in that is I have an option. I can carry a generator with me if I want to fill it up with gas or convert it to propane. You can do these Honda and Harbor Freight has a generator rivals it. They have kits that you can convert these generators to propane. You know, and that's something down the road. If I decided to do that, I could do that. Um, you know, that's not my verse planning to do so but i had that option it's a cool thing but this has a generator in this rv and the thing about this rv is there's not an inverter in this rv there's a converter meaning the generator sends power to a, a box that goes ac to dc conversion in other words it doesn't convert dc battery power to ac to use appliances so if i have to run the microwave back there or a major appliance plugged into the wall or the ac system uh not the furnace because that's a 12 volt ignition it's propane but um if I do any of those major appliances, I have to turn the generator on to do it. And that's annoying. It's burning gas and, and it, it just annoys me. And I can build an electrical system. My background, I have a, a background in electronics. I have a degree in that. Electronics, engineering, technology. So I'm very familiar with that. Um, but just because I do don't mean I'm going to get all intricate with that too. There's a lot, it's going to be a pretty pretty much plug and play setup uh with an exception of a little bit i've got half the power system already and and i've done a video on this before but it is i gotta grab it here real quick but half of that hang on i gotta unplug this half of that is the energy apex this little box right here is badass and there's several reviews been done online, mixed reviews, but most of the reviews that you see are amazing. People running whole RVs with this thing. I've got 300 watts of solar panels already. They're rigid flex. They're not really flexible. They're very well made. Lynx panels are stored up top here with this bed. That's another thing. I've got a, a bed up here. It comes out the ceiling. I don't even use it. Uh, I'm actually kind of scared to sleep in it. It's really creepy when you bring it down. And it, Not to mention, I've heard about the tracks they've had problems with these which i haven't done the recall yet but it's there if they need to ever fix it but anyway this thing here has a 15 watt and 100 watt inverter on it and i've got all the i've got 91 amp hours of battery power on here it's a lithium based system and energy is coming out with expansion batteries on this which they'll be very cost efficient they're not going to be as expensive as a huge deep cycle battery but you can put several hundred amp hours of battery on this thing and if you all you need is a 1500 watt inverter you got it but i i still think i need a, a bit bigger than inverter for one reason and that reason is simply this i'll plug that back in, in a minute that reason is simply this in my van build i'm going to install a the same as that a microwave convection oven and i may decide just to use the microwave on this which will run or get it and, and run the convection of it on 20 amp if i'm somewhere to do it service just plug it in but i think i might just get the 3000 watt pure sign and wave inverter and one 100 amp hour lithium deep cycle battery and just have that there and i can expand upon it and i might run one 100 watt solar panel on it so i have four solar panels on the roof um just as i've got that as a backup to an extra 100 amp hours but that would be solely for the big appliances and maybe run the AC unit that I'm putting in this van. I'm gonna be, another thing is, is if I need AC, it's gonna be uh, It's gonna be very power efficient. Is I'm gonna get one of these cruising comfort AC systems. 
you won't even see it on the outside of the van. The compressor's up under the van, and you got two lines, send and return that come in. You've got your blower and your rest of your unit inside. It's a 12 volt system. It pulls 46 amps. Um, I saw this thing in action at the Tiny Fest Northwest. Lady had the van I spoke about on the last video. Her name was Judy. In fact, Jared Tachi did a tour of her van. Go look that up. Jared Tachi, I talked about in the last video. Her name was Judy. He toured her van. And she told me when I was walking through, she was so cool that I, that she um, said, you know, she spent a lot of money and that most people wouldn't have to spend that much money as she did on it. But she said she ran that system for nine, 10 hours straight and didn't even use half the battery. And she had 300 amp hours worth of battery life. So it's really efficient. So everything will be 12 volt in this new build, except if I decide to plug in the microwave or uh, my Ninja, which I've got over here on the counter, or if I use an instant pot, which I, I've got one in storage. I've never used one of them never um in fact the one i've got to be too big to travel with i'd have to get a small one if i did it but another thing i intend to use instead of a propane stove is a lot of people are getting these induction cooktops i'll get an induction cooktop that i can everything i can stow and bring out as i need it and i can bring out and convert counter space which is so cool um the conversion of space i think is what is ideal it's another thing you can do um but the power system man i'm either going to split the divvy net or i'm going to get another big all-in-one system i was thinking about that titan system but for the money that costs i probably could save a couple of grand and just get the lithium battery and an inverter as an extra and use my energy apex get some add-on batteries when they come due and i have the solar panels for the roof already so the only thing you'll see on my roof if you can faintly see those flat solar panels and maybe a vent fan it's gonna be a max air fan so that'll be done uh the second reason here is simply um oh man i was talking about uh like plumbing you know i don't mind it but having to find dump stations for these big 40 gallon tanks is frustrating i just now found a place here in the charleston Sacramento area that an rv dealership that let me dump for free and you know every few weeks i can go do it but I can come out better just using an inside five gallon Thetford cassette and just dump it another way. And there's other options too that have been talked about on the internet, but uh, it's debatable whether I'm going that way or not. Rest assured, it's going to be a, a, a system that works. It'll work, and, and I'm not too worried about that. Um, another thing is I don't like propane, but you know, the only time I think I'll plan to use propane is. I've talked about getting a Wave 6 catalytic. So like one of these uh, radiant heaters. It's a dry heat for propane. It's not like one of those Mr. Buddy heaters that emit a lot of humidity and you've got to crack windows and it's just a pain. I mean, they're good. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people rave about them, but the catalytic Wave 6s are much more efficient. They're safer. You can run them longer. You can probably go to sleep at night knowing it's safe. It's running. It's just... It's, they call them safety heaters. They're, you know, they mount to the wall and you create two holes that go into a, you can create a vented safety box where you strap down a propane tank. And I just can carry the propane, propane when I need it because my refrigerator back here is propane and I can't stand it. Some people don't mind a propane fridge, but I do. It, it's not stable in refrigeration whatsoever. If you get temperatures get real cold or real hot, that fluctuates. Uh, you get high altitude, it fluctuates bad. I mean, I've had stuff just like defrost and melt in my fridge and freeze back again. Like I had these outshine fruit pops and they just freaking melt. And I didn't even know it and they froze again. And in fact, I've got proof in the pudding. Hang on one second. I got proof in the pudding on this deal. Here's one right here. That was a outshine. See the stick in there? It was floating around. So it's not in the same place that it was. But I mean, these, I love these things. These coconut outshine fruit pops, by the way. Side note, they're good. Um, not real sugary, but it melted it and it refroze it you know it's not stable stable whatsoever so i'm gonna go to uh i don't want an absorption fridge that's what they call them absorption i'm gonna go to a 12 volt to ac chest fridge or some sort of uh the apple cools are amazing i have a 20 quart a quart is a backup it's a 12 volt 
that I'll use that maybe as a freezer and get a 55 quart Alpha Cool. They're really cool. They're very cost efficient. A 55 quart Alpha Cool doesn't use much power either. Really rave reviews about them. It's about 300 and something dollars. Much cheaper than you get a 55 quart Dometic and you're going to pay a thousand dollars for that. So that's, you know, I'm thinking about that chest and kind of debating whether I'm going to do a built in for space reasons. But that, if I have enough space that I know I do, that chest fridge will be just fine. So I'm definitely going, you know, to that. So that'll be the, um, that, that'll be just much easier. So it really will. Uh, one of the big reasons about going smaller is that, number one, I don't mind it. I think it's cool as can be. It doesn't scream RV on it when you park in places. People haven't really bothered me. It's been so cool. I mean, I'll be, I'll let you in on something. I've bounced back from a couple of Walmart parking lots in the last four months and they don't care. They haven't said a word because I have a nice RV. I'm respecting. I'm out of the way. And on a side note, that's what I will best advice I can give you. When you stay in these Walmarts, kind of stay out of the way. Watch. Don't have any trash out. Don't pull your slides and your awning out and a grill. Don't do all that stuff. Just be respecting, be out of the way. And they ain't going to say anything. Most of these Walmarts, they didn't even call and ask. You know, that all stays apt for Walmart's pretty much states. You can stay there. Just just park and get up and leave in the morning. But when I'm in this van, they ain't even know I'm in there. You know, there are people that claim, oh, the stealth thing is BS. Well, it's BS if you're obvious about it. Getting out the back or you've got a big, huge AC unit up top and you got an awning bolted to the side of it. Yeah, that's going to scream RV. Uh, the van I build is not going to have an awning or an RV AC at the top of it. You'll see a little vent fan. That's nothing. Work vehicles, I see work vehicles around here all the time that have max air fans on them. They do it because they work out the back of them. They might be uh, dog wash companies or just construction vans. You know, they're ventilation fans, and they're great for that sort of thing. But uh, you'll have side windows that won't look so creepy like there's no windows in the back. I intend to buy the van with no windows, but I'm going to install two CR Lawrence type windows that go outward. So you got to have that for the ventilation if you run that an axe air fan, as a lot of you know. But um, another big issue is I just I want it to be accessible to go anywhere I want and be able to park wherever and not have to worry about am I going to fit. Um, I had one issue this summer. I had a couple, but one biggie was when I was at Zion National Park. I really wanted to drive through the tunnel. I wanted to see more of it. And I mean, to tell you, it's beautiful. I'm going to go back out and see it again. But um, they wouldn't let me drive through the tunnel. And people in the Facebook forums are saying they let them and their trends and their a task of Eva's go through. But listen, the park ranger, I don't know if it was his first day or not, but he measured it and went over it and got on literally on top of the roof. He was just made an ordeal of it. And he's like, man, I can't let you go through the tunnel. He said, we can get we can get you a, an escort pass and try to pull your mirrors in and do it, but I don't want to take a risk. And I just, I didn't know what to tell the guy. I couldn't say no. This is, you know, National Parks Ranger. He could t tell me turn around and leave, you know. Or, you know, and I, see you, have a nice day. But they were very cool about it. I just said, I'll just come back another time, you know. Uh, there's plenty of time for that, but... There's just a lot of reasons, and I think I've always just wanted to build one. I think I'm fascinated with being able to live in a space like that, and I can do it. Some people can't. I love it. People are like, how can you live in this small space? It's not that bad. If I'm sitting here at the desk, and I'm doing my music, and I'm working, a lot of times I don't even pay attention around me. Then I know I'm in an RV. I'm just in a, in, a, in a room like anywhere else doing my thing. It's really cool. So... But I intend to build. Um, as I said, I'm going to insulate with uh, either sheet fleece or sheet wool. And I'm going to probably, before I put that in, I'm going to put a thermo barrier. It's it's a vapor thermo barrier. It's a, the company that does the sheet fleece, the fleece is a company in the UK called Dodo. It's like Dodo, D-O-D-O-M-A-T dot com, dodomat.com. Um, I haven't priced the fleece. Uh, I don't know how many rolls I'd need of the of the initial uh vapor barrier it's an inch it's actually technically that's an insulation it's about mm, half an inch three-fourths of an inch thick it's an insulation vapor barrier and sound barrier that probably most people all they would do is put that in a van but the majority i hear is no you need more so but what i have found that works is either wool or fleece or something like that because one it doesn't mold and mildew 
and it dries quickly and you don't have to worry about that. It's safe and it's much more efficient. Um, if I've learned anything, never, ever, 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 ever uh, use fiberglass insulation in these things. You don't want to breathe that in. It's not safe and it mildews and it molds if it gets any moisture. You know, vehicles are susceptible to humidity and moisture. So you got to think about that. So, but I, but I intend to put this where I can use plus nuts and bolt all these fixtures in. I'll use a system of bolt them in with plus nuts and I'll use maybe uh, some cushion grommets between the fixtures so they're not slamming or squeaking against the side of the vehicle. They're bolted in, they're, they're sturdy and solid. They're not going anywhere. But it'll give me a chance to be able to map out where I want my desk, where I want to be able to put a kitchen and some shelving and things. The bed is going to be the first thing that goes in so I know... That's got to go in. I'll know my storage, and then from there I'll know how, you know, a lot of these guys put overhead cabinets like in here, but I'm not so sure I'm going to do that. The overhead takes so much room, but then again, it, it might happen. We're, we'll figure that out. I've got means to do so. But anyway, um, once I get to doing this, if I decide to post a build on this, I'll do it. I may post a little bit about the insulation. Everybody, that's a big thing in these RV vans is, How's it insulated? How you know it's like we don't know how to insulate it. You know everybody's doing that spray foam and these these rigid poly iso board, and I'm not going that route. I tell you, I'm just not doing it. I tell you what, what I will do, and I know a lot of people are using the uh, Reflectix, which is good, but you got to use that Reflectix correctly too. You just can't put it on there because if it's touching the panel, the metal, or touching the windows. It's useless. You got to have a gap with the reflect. It has to be for the barrier. It has to be able to reflect heat. Um, does well on your windows with these, but you know, I will probably put some reflectix on top of that wool where it's not touching between the ceiling panels and the roof because you need some heat deflect for the sun coming on the top of the vehicle. But um, they say the wool in that vapor barrier that 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 you put over it is amazing. That itself will work just fine. It'll get rid of the, a lot of the heat. It'll maintain a consistent and not more in here than outside. So you don't want to turn it into an oven, but that's a whole different conversation and a whole different science. A lot of other people on YouTube talking about that stuff. But anyway, um, as I do it, I may get on and post a lot about it. But anyway, any of you guys, you musicians that record, this is a cool setup right here. This defines the means of really minimal space that you need to work with and record. I and mean, if you don't mind it, this is the way to do it. Um, now, don't get me wrong, this isn't the only thing I have. I have a storage unit full of gear, but can't take everything with you. Not everything's necessary, but, you know, I, I bring my guitars in and out and various things that I use and plug into this thing. It's not everything is internal, but with technology, it's amazing what you can do. It really is amazing. But anyway, until part three or the next time, be cool. Be cool.